Welcome to the Best Kept Secrets podcast where we share our best kept secrets about life, love, God and everything in between. Hi guys, welcome to episode 3 of season 4 of Best Kept Secrets podcast where we share our best kept secrets on God, love, life and everything in between. First of all, even before we go far, I want to apologize for the fact that episode 2 has not gone up yet. Hopefully by the time you watch this, it's already gone up, but we apologize for the delay. Thank you for being patient with us. So let's get right into today's episode and today's guest, who I am very excited to have because I am a fan of him. I don't know if he knows that I'm a fan of him, but I'm very excited to have this conversation with him. I usually let my guests introduce themselves. So Mike, please introduce yourself. Tell us everything you do. My name is Mashiri Mike. I am a digital content creator. I'm also a gospel musician. And uh, I'm also a corporate MC. And thank you so much for having me. Ujaini ambiwa ni fan. I am a fan. So, Julia Rapa. I'm a fan, Kanza, of Mama Michael. Like, I feel like you embody my own mother. Yeah. So, oh, I do. Yeah, so every time I watch those videos, uh, me and my mom send your videos back and forth with each other because mm -hmm. they are so hard. Like, thank you, you so much. have gotten it right on the head Thank with so just much. how African mothers now, are Samaya, if, if I didn't believe in, in the existence of heaven and hell, I would probably assume in my previous life I was an African mother. I think I think <laughs> you are. As I, I specifically think I was. a Kikuyu mother. A Kikuyu mother, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know I didn't know you you I don't know how you're gonna take this. Mm. I didn't know you're very open about uh god jesus mm -hmm. until i watched your podcast really yeah, yeah. and i really loved yeah. your episode with uh joyce omondi yeah thank yeah. you yeah. i am maybe a bit more vocal than i used to be mm -hmm. but i've always i've always it's always been there maybe just not as loud as, as loud, it is yeah. now yeah. yeah yeah so now speaking of which mm -hmm. our conversation today is on christianity christianity mm -hmm. and whether it's boring. It's boring. Christian yeah. life is it boring? Yes. So is Christian life boring? Yeah. Let's just answer that question to start with. I do not think it is. You don't think so? Yeah, I don't think it is. I see why people would think it's boring. I also see why people would think yeah. it's boring. Yeah. So before you got, first of all, how mm -hmm. long have you been a Christian? I mean, um, having been born in a very Christian uh, background and family, my mom, my mom is a Pasi. But Your she mom is a pastor. Yeah, I'm a PK, no. but um, I think things are starting your part. to make <laughs> sense. To edit your part, but anyway, I'm kidding. Um, my mom is not like an actual pastor, pastor, mm. but she's an assistant pastor where she goes to church. Okay, and she's been she's been that for as long as I've known myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was a kid. Um, I have told this story so many times. We used to live in Mombasa. I was mm -hmm. born in Mombasa, uh, and I don't have very many memories of me in Mombasa. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Sorry. But the core memory I have of Mombasa is my mom taking me to church mm -hmm. uh, to Nakauko Nyuma and I used to love the prison worship sessions. Oh. I used to love them so mm -hmm. much. Yeah. And then uh, we moved to Nyeri. I still loved church. I went to high school. I was serving in church. I think me, 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 all my Your life. Your whole life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I would say that. But you didn't have like an encounter where you're now like okay now I'm born again I'm whatever did you have that I think to some to some extent I was really associating myself with Christianity or to or with God mm. uh, by the virtue of my mom having introduced me to Christianity okay. I really hadn't like sought after God on a personal level yeah. but then when I went to uni when I was in uni was when I actually when I was in high school was when I was actively seeking after God mm -hmm. uh, at a very personal level. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when I would say like I had like personal encounters with mm. God. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's completely the opposite of me. Mm -hmm. um, my parents are not pastors or anything, mm -hmm. but I did grow up going to church. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad's... What church? Cousin, um, NPC, it was known as NPC back then, oh, but NPC. yeah, mm -hmm. NPC Karen, which is now Sitam Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad's side of the family, his cousins we, were very into church. Into so church, okay. I would go to church with them. They used to... One of them was a Sunday school teacher, so she mm -hmm. was my Sunday school teacher, mm -hmm. and 
I remember growing up looking at them like I want to be them. Mm-hmm. So church wasn't uncool for me. It was a cool thing. In fact, I loved church growing up. Mm-hmm. I loved DBVS. I loved DBVS. Yeah. Yoni, yama cool kizama ni nini? Unielezea mimi wa nyeri bana. It's like a DBVS was it's like, like a youth um thing. No, it not really youth, mm-hmm. like teenagers and oh, and okay. younger kids okay. mm-hmm. where we just like it was during holiday school holiday where mm-hmm. we just like do things i don't even remember what it was but i just remember it was fun um okay. so that was my definition of like fun growing up and whatever then i went to high school and i was just like mm, don't Church really want to do that anymore <laughs> i never went like uh-huh. i was never really keen on going for cu mm-hmm. or for going for like any of in fact i used to look at cu people like wow oh, she's shamba. doing a lot yeah, yeah, yeah. To, i'm <laughs> like hey she prays like that whole choir master. you were a choir master i was a whole choir master when i was in high school oh yeah. i i do not really i mean i was a bad girl mm-hmm. then i and went i believe i don't <laughs> doubt that <laughs> I believe you What Sharon. do you mean? I mean, uh-huh. yeah. So I just lost that interest and then I went to uni, mm-hmm. same thing. I had no interest, I had no desire. Um yeah, and then now because I'm not in my parents' house, I don't have to go to church on Sunday. It was just like whatever. Like mm-hmm. I don't I don't even remember if I even went to church ever when I was in uni. uni. Okay. I actually don't recall mm-hmm. any moments of being in church. Um yeah, then I had some things happening and i was brought back to the lord that drew you to back drew to me back to I'm god i'm so glad i'm so yes. glad you found your way back <laughs> yeah so i i'm trying to remember if before i i became now like christian by my own desire to seek god mm-hmm. did i ever think that being a christian was boring before did you ever i think i did mm-hmm. when i was in high school and mm-hmm. when i was in uni i never i was just like you know like boring you know one thing one thing that will make you think christianity is boring uh that's why i will never buy into the theory of being born again mm-hmm. you know there are those people who claim at me me i'm spiritual i i believe in god i believe in jesus yeah. but i don't go to church okay and i i, I think that's a very flawed theory especially right. especially when you even relate it to the bible because it's not been biblical because mm-hmm. the bible insists on fellowship yeah yeah And one thing that will really make you think that Christianity is boring is mm. lack of a community. Mm, when you're born again, you. yeah, mm. when you're born again, when you're doing life as a Christian, you need a community. You need to go to church, you need to have friends who are born again, you need mm-hmm. a community. If you don't have a community, you're going to sleep back to your old ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's interesting because I wonder um is Christianity boring mm-hmm. or does it not fit into what culture says is fun? Abu repeat. Is Christianity boring or does it not fit okay. into what culture says is fun? Maybe we can we can figure out what does culture say is fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Plus also there's been there's been um there's also come a lot of a lot of theories and a lot of a lot of uh, what would I say misconceptions about yeah. Christianity mm-hmm. even by Christians themselves. Mm-hmm. There are things you're not supposed to do. I I would put them quote on quote yeah. there's things you're not supposed to do mm-hmm. just because you call yourself a christian mm-hmm. when in real sense that's just religion that's just being religious mm. yeah. yeah and unapata at the end of the day you're really the one sucking fun mm-hmm. out of christianity yeah because you're being too religious mm. yeah what would you say culture's definition of fun is like i mean you're young how old are you i'm 25 you're tw- mike i'm 25 You're a baby in a, in your mother's crib. Anyways, no. Eh, eh, I would uh, say the le. <laughs> if not I'm in my 30s. No, I thought you were like 20, like 8. Eight. I'm yeah. I'm okay. So, uh, that's early 20s, mid 20s. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. what is the definition of fun in that age? What are young now? people doing yes now? I mean, the the usual going out um alcohol here and there with road trips mm-hmm. zingine si mbaya mm-hmm. ba zingine sasa um ni mbaya yeah mm. i would say that's the definition of fun in this day and age yeah 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 i mean i i agree and i think if i was if i became a christian when i was in my early 20s mm-hmm. i think to be honest i would have struggled Same. because now at the uh, you're still oh my God. <laughs> 
been a Christian and your I whole won't. life, straight from your mother's womb. But yeah. that doesn't mean that you didn't do some stuff. Yeah, so now that's the thing. Did mm-hmm. you ever have any of those struggles where you were just like, I know I'm a Christian, but most this definitely, is boring? Most definitely, most definitely, most definitely. Especially in a setting, Aya Uni, Ukopale Hostel, your roommate, your friends, and do not ascribe themselves. Yeah. They do not call themselves Christians. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the that's the group you're oftenly with. Mm-hmm. You, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna miss the mark at some point. Yeah. 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 And that was my life in uni at some point. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I completely um empathize with mm-hmm. people, with people who are in their early twenties mm-hmm. and they're struggling because they feel like they are feeling left out or mm-hmm. they can't do what everyone else is yeah, doing. Yeah. Um, but I think earlier on you said that Christians are the ones who make Christianity look boring, boring because yeah, they are yeah, doing true. religious things. Yeah. And come to think of it, I think that's actually even what the problem is because there's nowhere it says that you can't go on a road trip or you can't go on a picnic, you can't go bowling, exactly. you can't go painting. And you see those, painting, those fun, you fun stuff. You know, like, that's completely exactly. fine. And those fun, fun stuff, these are most Christians, especially the old generation of Christians, yeah. uh, consider they, they, they are not Christianity, they are their sins. Mm. Come, I'll use an example of my mom. Me and my mom, at some point I had dreadlocks. Um, and my mom was telling, so, so, wait, wait, lead worship on a dreadlock. Mm-hmm. You get? Yeah. And I don't get I don't see where in the Bible it says it's, it it's wrong have to have dreadlocks. Yeah. yeah. So, so you shaved them off? I I I, I shaved my dreadlocks, not because of my mom. Okay. Yeah. You didn't want them of, anymore. Yeah, some because okay. of something personal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, one of the people I really love is Jackie Hill Perry. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. She has the longest dreadlocks, she tattoos, yeah, yeah, yeah. piercings. And she doesn't even dress conventionally the way yeah, we men. Yeah, she doesn't. Yeah. Like she's always like in sneakers and whatever. And it's so cool to e- me. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Oh, your pastor, that's she not, wears him. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you see that that's the way, the, uh, the reason why I'm saying that that is a very flawed kind of mindset yeah. is because that was the definition of fear of Nini. What can I to say? These guys who are consistently um, after Jesus. What are they called? The Pharisees. Pharisees. Because yeah, yeah. their main aim was to, uh, was outward observance of the law. Yes. Rather than inward, inward purity. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And I think there is a lot of Pharisees in today's day and age. Oh. There are so many. So many. So, so many. I think it's just, you know, even as you, as you go after God's heart, it's mm-hmm. important to not get caught up in religion and exactly. and you know doing mm-hmm. things by the book like the um, pharisees were actually we're reading the book of john in my bible study mm-hmm. and we've realized how not a good church uh, in my bible study or in your, in your bible, <laughs> in your, your, bible study, your, your personal my, bible study yeah 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 with my friends oh with your friends uh, yeah, okay i'm still nice. yet to you have, you have friends a community where yes, you do bible study yeah that's amazing. Um, I'm still yet to find a church. I'm struggling there, but mm-hmm. I know I will. I know. It's one, I know of, one. It's one of my... Which one? Um, <laughs> I go to a church in Nairobi. Uh, it's called Mass in Nairobi. And it's a very community-based church. Mm-hmm. Uh, and their, their main goal, their main vision and mission is evangelism, okay. discipleship, and to just get the word to Out. people. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I love the way they dissect their word. Mm. I love the way Utani on a candle. But yeah, I'm still trying. It's one, it's one of my goals this year just to find a church and to settle there. But in my Bible study with my friends, we're reading the book of John. John mm-hmm. And we've realized that there are so many times where they could not see Jesus for who he was mm-hmm. because they were so stuck on him. Jesus doesn't follow the rules. Exactly. He doesn't observe, he healed someone on, on the Sabbath or, you know, he did things that were not in line with the mosaic law, which is what they followed. Yeah. And there's even a part where Jesus tells them, you know the law by heart. Like you quote mm-hmm. sc- scriptures and whatever, but I am the Messiah and I'm standing in front of you and you, I'm paraphrasing obviously, and you can't even see and me for who me I am and recognize me as a messiah and i was just like it's really been challenging for us because we're just like we don't want to just be so focused on doing things mm-hmm. by the book mm-hmm. and following the 10 commandments mm-hmm. and whatever that we miss out on the actual yeah. relationship yeah. with god yeah. yeah and there are 
they were so blinded by religion and their laws because uh, they were expect they feel to believe that Jesus was the messiah because they were expecting yeah. a political messiah. Yeah, yeah. Msimonye atakuja our save from the political instability yeah. that was going on yeah. at that point. And that also translates to say uh, there are so many there are so many things we we choose to consume ama so many laws ama things that we think they are in the bible mm. and they are actually not in the bible mm-hmm. things that we think are right but they are not right mm-hmm. thinking at him, we are living the life that god wants us to live when yeah. we really are not living that kind of life yeah. I'll, i'll 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 give us an yes, example because um relationship i'm saying my god your relationship with god some things really depend on your intimacy and relationship with god mm-hmm. and if 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 the holy Sp- let me give an example if the holy spirit convicted you to not um put on makeup when you're going to church okay i'm just giving you an yeah, example yeah, yeah. if mm-hmm. you felt like the holy spirit convicted you to mm. do that don't come and impose it on everyone and who wants to kusema you know it's wrong for ladies to go to wear makeup. na makeup in mm. church you get yeah and that's where now we miss the mark yeah. and we even make christianity itself look like something uh, yeah that like where you're living in a cage yeah, and yeah. You, yeah. Um I like that you brought that up because are there any things that you had to let go of yeah, because yeah. you felt like okay this is not yeah. serving me or god <laughs> Yeah my earrings I used to Really Yeah yeah mm. uh, I mean I I felt I I felt convicted to you know not do them anymore mm-hmm. Yeah Anything else Um anything else um you know some friends I used to hang out with places I used to go There's so many things I used to do that I thought were right. Mm. But as I progressed in my journey in Christianity when I really started uh, intentionally work uh intentionally worked on my relationship with mm-hmm. God, there are so many things that I was convicted to yeah. stop doing mm-hmm. and some others to start doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you do you ever have moments where you're just like, "Oh, like I miss my earrings or i miss going to certain oh, places or you know there's some outfits yeah. navanga even asema oh my god ninge kona earrings zini ana vibaya sana yeah but you see the conviction the thing with conviction is you start feeling uncomfortable yeah i w- I, w- i will use my example as a case you start feeling uncomfortable when you've been doing something for a very long while and then when you start working on your relationship with god when you're doing that thing you start feeling uncomfortable and uneasy and you just know You, you you just know kama i used to be i used to i used to romanticize being a loner okay I, yeah i used to romanticize being a loner mm-hmm. at a church a uh, church kisha ndio mimi sure naenda that's me yeah at a siko na serve at a siko na serve i used yeah. to sing but siko na serve church um i was never part of any department niko tuna na church na toka mm. i didn't even, i never I, i never had a community i never had friends whom we talked about a god mm. the bible mm-hmm. and that's also one of the things that really god convicted me and you know some of these things are just pride yeah you know they are just pride yeah. you you just in your own cocoon you don't want anything or anyone to interfere with it including god yeah and god is just when you start working on your relationship with god god is just stripping those things off off of mm. you yeah Oh yeah, I I completely get that and now that you're even speaking about community I think mm-hmm. that's actually maybe the the biggest challenge especially for young yeah, people like yeah. like you were saying earlier if you're doing it alone mm-hmm. of course you're going to get bored yeah, of course you yeah bored. but like if you have a community and you have friends then you can go out and do things you can you know you can still have fun mimi a mimi community friends friends whom we have bible study together worship together we go to church together they are the ones who really kept me solid mm. you know they're the ones who kept me solid in my work with god yeah um Of course God himself has kept me very very yeah. strong in my in my journey but also friends whom we you know even the bible says confess your sins to one another ukiwa peke yako whom are you confessing your sins to you know when you're struggling with something when you're struggling with a sin and you share with a friend who helps you to walk to walk uh, who works with you in that specific area you're going to overcome it and that's mm-hmm. the power of community and fellowship and that's mm-hmm. why even god utter disciples in the book of acts there's so much emphasis yeah. on community and um yeah there's so much emphasis on community mm, yeah i completely agree um <clears throat> i just answering the question that i asked you earlier about things that i've had to let go of mm-hmm. um like i said i was a bad girl mm-hmm. um <laughs> 
Uh, by the way, um, you give me examples. Yeah. Um, I started like partying, drinking when I was what, like 16. 16, okay. Yeah, like in form four. Oh my God, my mother is watching this. Sorry, mom. She didn't know that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> we snuck in alcohol like in form four. Mm-hmm. We shared one bottle and mm-hmm. we all acted like we were drunk, but we really weren't because mm-hmm. we shared like seven of us mm-hmm. one bottle. Um, and then straight out of high school, I was definitely, I grew up with a very strict mom. Mm-hmm. So I think when I left high school, I was just like, okay, this is my time to just do everything that I've wanted to do. She never let me go for sleepovers. She never mm-hmm. let me, like even going out, going to see my friends was very, I have to ask her months in advance for me to get permission to do yeah. it. And it's not guaranteed I'm going to get permission to do it. So most of the times I would end up socializing within church and I would end up seeing my friends only if it was like related to school or whatever. Mm -hmm. So when I went to uni, I made sure I went far away from her. I went to Athi River. I was in Bista Athi River. Yeah, but our age difference. You were there when I had left. (laughs) Oh, God. uh, Yeah, uh but um, I went to Athi because I was just like, I'm trying to go as far from her as possible. Mm-hmm. So my parents live in Rongai. Athi River is far. Mm-hmm. So I went when there. When you were Yeah, my I've parents live in Rongai. Oh. <laughs> I'm seeing it. <laughs> I'm <not laughs> what were Rongai, please? Uh, Mike uh-huh. and Sema. So uh-huh. I went to Athi River and I was just like, yeah, now I have like my freedom to do whatever. And I did whatever. I drank, I partied, I smoked weed. I did, I did everything that I could possibly do. Uh, but there was also an exaggeration in the way that I was doing things, but only because I really wanted that freedom so bad. So I abused the freedom when I got it. Um, in hindsight, looking back, I kind of am grateful that my mom was protective was over mm-hmm. me because yeah. there are things that in my child mind, I wasn't seeing as protection. Mm-hmm. Me, I was seeing as yeah. ananikazia, yeah. like mbona ananiambia nisiende apa, nisifanye evi. But in hindsight, I'm like, she was just trying to protect me. She was doing her best. So I did everything that could possibly would have done. Mm -hmm. And it got so bad that like, I got to a point where these things were, I was using them to mask other Mm. things that I was going through. Right. So I would drink at some point, not for, not always, but at some point in my life, I would drink to forget things that were happening in my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so when I got saved, when I became a Christian, I can't, began. yeah, but I can't say that I immediately stopped. Okay. And I think that's a stereotype that people have or a misconception people yeah. have that when you get, when you become a Christian, you immediately change your life and you become holier than thou. No, it takes time. It, it it's a take journey. Time. Yeah, it's it a journey and you just allow God to whatever. So there's this thing that I learned mm-hmm. that um, a prayer you pray and you ask God to help you lose taste for certain things. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some things you are really interested in and you really loved, you tell God, God, please help me lose taste for mm-hmm. this thing. And yeah. immediately, not immediately, but mm-hmm. over some time, over time, yeah. over time, you just start to feel like, I don't even like that thing anymore. Yeah. Oh, mm, yeah. I don't really want to drink anymore. I don't want to do whatever. So I just like stopped drinking because I just didn't like the taste of alcohol. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I never really liked the taste of alcohol, to be honest. <laughs> but I persevere through like through it. Yeah. But I get that people who enjoy drinking mm-hmm. and they do like the taste of alcohol and whatever. Mm-hmm. So I get that. But I think the one thing that I can say, um, because when I stopped drinking, I was, I was just now I was just like okay. Now let me just smoke shisha only, like mm-hmm. you know, because that's my only yeah, like drug. Yeah. That's the only thing that I'm gonna do. And it got so bad that I, w- I was smoking a lot because mm-hmm. I'm trying to, you know, in social settings, I'm like, this is the only thing that okay. I can do. Mm-hmm. And I just told God, please help me lose the taste for this thing because mm-hmm. I don't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. I'd get headaches. Like it was just, it would make me feel yuck. Mm-hmm. And now I can be around people and they're smoking shisha, and I feel nothing for it. Okay. I feel like. Mm, Great, That's good for good. you, but That's whatever. Good. So you can mm-hmm. ask God to help you lose taste for things. For things yeah. And yeah. it happens gradually over time. Yeah. It's yeah. not like, a, oh, yeah, now mm-hmm. I'm saved and now I don't yeah. drink, I don't do this, I don't yeah. do that. It's a, like, it's a journey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. One of, the things, one of the things that God really values is brokenness. And mm-hmm. my definition of brokenness is just getting to a point where you realize you're incredibly insufficient without God. And you cannot... You, you cannot, 
you can't sustain yourself. There are things you can't sustain yourself. And the reason why we think, the reason why people think at you when you when you get saved, you stop, you have to stop doing um, the things that you are doing when you are not born again is because we use our own mind and mm. our own ability to yeah. stop doing them. When in fact you should surrender and be broken before God and just be raw with God and tell mm. him, me by the way, I used to do this and this, I used to do porn, I used to drink a lot, I used to do weed, and now that's in your I want to start a new journey with you and I cannot do it on my own. Yeah. And when you fall again, you will fall one, once yeah. or two times or three times. You'll get back up, tell God, God, I have sinned. And it's not... And this is not to encourage you to continue sinning, but I'm just um, I'm just telling people it's God gives you the grace when you mm. are new, when you are newborn, uh, new, newborn, baby <laughs> when you're a baby Christian, surrender, and surrender is just realizing and you know just telling yourself that you're insufficient without God. And this yeah. journey, unless God is with you, you cannot do it on your own. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I completely agree because I think we think that we are, we usually do these things out of our own strength, mm -hmm. you think that you'll stop doing certain things because you have the capacity to do it yeah. or you're a self-willed mm -hmm. person or mm -hmm. all of these things. It's God that helps you do all of those things. It's God, yeah. it's God. Yeah, yeah, it's God. And that's why ju unapata msei sasa ni miyokoka. Because this is, at least this is what I used to do, even nikiwa ni miyokoka. The things that I used to struggle with, and I use my own human ability to stop them. Mm. Uh, for example, you can you, you can use the example of porn. Una jiambia, ata na naeka simu mbali, laptop na yeka mbali, na yachata nyumbani, it's my time with God. And in one way or another, mm. when you're where you are, you'll still have access to porn, yeah. and you're going to do the stuff that you do. Yeah. Uh, but then when we surrender and be real with God, and know it's a conversation you have to have with God. I'm struggling with this and this yeah. and this. And I need you, God, to give me the strength and the grace to stop doing this and to be in accordance with your will. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I completely agree because yeah. Aki, I feel like human beings have this thing of control where we think we're in control of our lives yeah. and we think we're in yeah. charge of our lives <laughs> and we say I'm a self-control. I yeah. have self-control. I and that's a, a fruit of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. But there are certain things that you can only do with God. Exactly. You can't do without Him. Yeah. And once you realize that and you stop fighting it, mm -hmm. it gets easier because you have help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because you surrender. Because you surrender. And it. you give yourself yeah. to God. Yeah, yeah. So in the same breath, uh, not really in the same breath, but a tangent. Mm -hmm. So I was on Jared. Shout out to Jared mm -hmm. and Ben. Mm -hmm. Psycho was saying how he feels like he's tired of. Christian events because they always one they're always conferences. It's always bringing Joshua Selman or bringing this person or bringing this person. Mm -hmm. We don't really have like any cool concerts. We don't mm. really have like you know like a blanket and wine mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. yeah. So is like, do you feel like Christian events could be more fun? I, I feel I feel Christian events would be more fun because um. Because the goal, the goal is to strip, the goal is to spread the gospel, uh, and uh, if we use, if we unajua people use the excuse here, this verse, that, this verse that says, um, do not conform to the ways of this world, yeah. do blah 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 blah. But then again, if we are gonna, if we are gonna use the modern ways, we are living in a different time here, mm. and it's necessary. There is need for us to use better ways to spread the gospel. Yeah. If it means, you know, like having a, a you know, like a blankets and, blankets and wine kind of setup, but then it's like a worship session, what would have come? Yeah. What would have come? And that's also another avenue that will also encourage young people to come and worship. Yeah. Yeah. Una to corner this holier than thou mindset here. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it should be within the confines of a church building, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Let's stop being religious here. Yeah. And, mm. and very, because I, th I think that kind of mindset comes from a very hypocritical yeah. Uh, place. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, event organizers, if there's anyone here watching and is an event organizer, there's such a big gap for you guys to yeah. fill because, yeah. like Mike is saying, not all Christian events need to be in the church. Some of them can be in a nice, you know... Ka, Just like a simple setup. Yeah, yeah, like give us nice artists, give us... First of all, if 
try bring Maverick City, you see the way you'll sell tickets yeah. like no one's yeah. business. You know, because there's, there's so... Yeah, like, honestly, me personally, yeah. I agreed with him because I felt like... I mean, I love Joshua, Pastor Joshua Selman. I, I love those, those events, but mm-hmm. there's only so many that you can go for. Yeah. And yeah. yes, there's always wisdom to be downloaded and anointing and all of that. But I'm still young i yeah. want to go hang out with my friends in places yeah. and feel young and and, and, and it's very valid no joke no to dismiss a kwambie the gospel see the gospel is a gospel it doesn't matter whether you're young whether you're 90 we are living at a different time and era god yeah. is the same today forever but then again me having the feelings of wanting young wanting to be youthful and wanting mm-hmm. youthful ways to uh be able to worship god yeah it's it's very valid it's very valid yeah. yeah do you feel like it's harder to be a christian now than it was for other generations like our parents or their parents do seeing i think it's that harder? like yeah seeing that there's social media now mm-hmm. there's pop culture all of these things you know the thing you know the thing is um they may come to realize There's a lot of unlearning I have to do. Mm-hmm. There's like a lot of unlearning I had to do uh when I started seeking after God uh now at a at a personal level. Not just saying at in Miyokoka because my mom took me to church. Yeah. And there are things that I've had to I've been in a long process yeah learning learning and unlearning. And uh there are things that I'm learning, the new things that I'm learning. There's a new there are new ways that there are things the revelation the new revelations I don't like using the name revelation but you know yeah there are things there are new things that I'm learning that are really disrupting the theory that I that used to be ingrained in my mind yeah. the one probably my mom taught me the one I knew from way back what was I getting at so I think <laughs> Do you I think, think it's harder? not hard mm-hmm. remaining remaining a christian being solid in your work with god i think is the hardest thing mm. i think it's harder yeah it, it's 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 not hard ko ko kasa in because we're living you know let's be honest we're living at a time where everyone is just looking for hope yeah you know because of the economy because of the economic times because of everything everything you know everyone is looking for hope and when you're selling them hope in form of ko born again mm. it's very easy for someone to be born again mm-hmm. but then for them to be solid in that stand for them to be solid in, in god and yeah. in the work now that's the hard thing but then you know um hmm. okay turn there <laughs> what <laughs> i wanted to say something about you know because mm. you know You know many many people don't realize especially what while you were Kitambo. Mm. Uh, and you started going to church Kitambo and you weren't reading the word on your own. Au mm. study yeah. the Bible ama au ko meokoka vizuri. Mm. Kwa, you were just depending on what you were feeding off of church and your pastor mm. or your parents. There's a lot of unlearning to do. There's yeah. a there's a lot. Come on. Where I go to church. And this is very this is going to be very controversial. I'm sure kuna watu pale kwa comments watakuwa like hey that's wrong that's wrong. Mm. Deputy Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know I learned that um you can't you can't you can't fast. You you can't they not know that you can't fasting fasting to get something fasting to get a material thing fasting mm-hmm. to get a car mm. is actually not biblical. Fasting to get a house is not biblical. Mm-hmm. Fasting to get anything material yeah is not biblical mm-hmm. when you fast cuz cuz there's nothing that god can't give you so you yeah. fasting at in your but you get a car is like trying to manipulate god mungu mwenye alisema if you, you do not have cuz you do not ask mm. now that's the god you're trying to fast and you pate that material thing mm-hmm. you there's nothing god can't give you yeah so fasting together thing is like a form of manipulation Mm. You know the kuna words zenye kuna words zenye um I could use to describe that new revelation I had the time nearly scare your sermon but I'm not sure not everyone is going to agree with it yeah and for the longest time I have for the longest time for many times many times I have fasted to get something 
okay. when in actual sense the intent of fasting should be to edify your work with God. Yeah. Fasting should the only intent behind the only motive behind fasting should only be to draw you closer. Yeah, to draw you cl- to actually draw you closer mm. to God. Yeah. Okay. That's the main in, uh, intent of fasting. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree with you in terms of there's a lot of unlearning we need to do yeah, yeah. um especially this generation of ours because a lot of us were taken to church when we were young mm-hmm. and we were told things yeah. so we've never questioned and anything believed them. we believed it we've never questioned anything yeah. we've never asked or searched mm-hmm. or sought out we've never maybe we've not even read the bible for yeah. yourself you just know all oh, Christianity is like this or or oh, the bible says this does it say that have you read for mm-hmm. yourself yeah, have exactly. you you know and as much as yes pastors and preachers are put there to to teach us mm-hmm. and whatever there's also a beauty in going to the word for yourself mm-hmm. and seeking it out and seeing that, okay actually, am i living in the confines of religion or yeah that should be the main that should actually be the main thing where we're seeking after god uh, and that's that's the secret place now that's the yeah. secret that's the secret place in in angelo in psalms seek after god yourself read the word of god mm-hmm. pray and then sunday go and listen to your pastor yeah. but now squeeze it the other way around yeah like i just yeah, go on sunday yeah. and, and that's the problem because yeah. now people are worshiping their pastors they're not even worshiping god who that's like a whole episode on its own yeah. because kanza <laughs> africans africans yeah yeah my pastor yummy. can't be wrong you know apana well, uh, my pastor said this so it has to be true no, yeah yeah that i could say a lot about <laughs> that one but i will not another question i had is I wrote is Christianity boring or are people looking for freedom to do whatever they want to do? Is Christianity boring or are people, people looking, looking for looking for freedom to do whatever they want to do? You know there's a verse in the Bible that says everything is permissible. Mm-hmm. But is everything beneficial? Yeah. So um obviously there's a sacrifice that comes with being a Christian. Mm-hmm. There's the price to pay. You know and that's and now now to that's the thing that people don't want to hear there's a price to pay there's a sacrifice to have, you have to make in your walk with God the things you have to let go unfortunately the things you have to let go unfortunately you cannot you don't have the you're no longer in control of your life and now God is in control of your life yeah and you can only do those things that please God yeah now to throw a spanner in the works mm-hmm. Um today I randomly stumbled across um a YouTube video by some atheists and they were breaking down another video a lady had done about Christianity being boring and they were asking if our god has given us free will then why does he tell us to not do certain things he tells us okay you guys have free will do you know do whatever but don't do this don't do that don't do that so what are your thoughts uh, <laughs> um I think there's also we should also like uh Tongale definition of free will. But then I want to ask are we really even you know outside from the confines of being a Christian do you really have the free will to do anything you want? No. Exactly. Yeah. Atasai where we are seated this is someone owns this building someone owns this house. Uh you have the ability you have the strength to kukuja hapa na kile kichuma ugongei wol na yanguke. You have the free will to do that. You also have the free will if you have a car to drive ugonge mse wa boda and you'll still be arrested but because you have five common senses uh because you're within now the confines of the of the law there are things you can't do yeah there are things you can't do because it goes without saying okay let me not let me not say that at without saying but there are things you cannot do yeah and i think that's the same thing with with now being a christian mm-hmm. you know and but don't talk what you were saying in asemanga everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial you have the right and the ability to do everything that you want but is everything that you do that's going to be is everything that you want to do or you actually do that's going to be beneficial to you you know god knows uh ukona free will ya to go out party do alcohol do drugs have sex or you want with anyone with everyone but in the long run is it beneficial to you mm. yeah yeah 
Yeah, I completely agree because like you're saying, they are, even in the in the country of Kenya, we have laws that we follow, exactly. right? So we don't go around killing people. Yeah. We don't go around just like, you know, stealing yeah. or doing all of these things, right? Mm-hmm. We live in within certain, con- laws. Yeah, certain yeah. laws, yeah. right? Um, and even those people who don't want to, you know, follow whatever the Christian quote-unquote mm-hmm. laws or rules are, they mm-hmm. are still rules that they follow with whichever, yeah. whatever, mm-hmm. whatever life it is they live. So it's just what you're saying, like, which one is serving me better? And I, I feel like if people just gave God a chance and not was he, was he, was he queer at the sidelines, you know, asking themselves that thing, Nikioko santa cha kufanya hii, nikioko santa cha kufanya hii, I'm mm. leave this and this, and just give God a chance. Because yeah. it gets sweeter. Your work with God might not be as easy, but it gets very sweeter. And I wish I had more words. I wish God and as an Ipatia more words to really like um, put together to, to, to say it the way he would want me to say it. Because it really does get sweet with God. Yeah. Mm. And Christianity is not boring. Work with God is the best thing you can ever do to you, to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Um, I want to just read something th- which I is my best kept secret mm-hmm. for this conversation. Mm-hmm. This is by one of my really, like I really love this artist. His name is Called Out Music. I'm sure I you know, know him. Yeah. yeah. I love his music. So he says, the Christian life is full of freedom. We are not in bondage, but we have boundaries. Mm -hmm. These boundaries are for our benefit. The Bible is our ever constant guide. Let's use it daily. It helps. Exactly. So I think the way Christianity has been presented Mm -hmm. um, to a lot of us is that it's a life of bondage. It's, you know, you live in a cage, you don't do certain things. When it's actually not. When it's actually not. We have freedom. Mm -hmm. We just have boundaries. And those boundaries serve us in the long run. They help us. They are for our benefit. They are for our benefit. But then, you know, when you are so focused on have, you know, just wanting to be in control and in charge of your life, that's where the problem is because you don't actually let God lead you. And you don't, you're not open to hearing certain things yeah. or not doing certain things because mm-hmm. you're just like me i want to live my life they want to live it i don't want to be told what to do and whatever which is what you were saying earlier that's a pride thing yeah. so i think you need to check your pride mm-hmm. and you need to check okay god will check you oh god so, will so check so you yeah that, or you or if you god. let god check you because <laughs> that's gonna be a lot harder because <laughs> god resists the proud. What mean are your God person? Yeah. God resists the proud. Yeah. But if I think it's just, you know, like go back to okay, um, I don't want to let go of certain mm-hmm. things. Why do you not want to let go of them? I don't want to be told what to do. Why don't you want to be told what to do? And is it really God telling you mm-hmm. what to do? Mm-hmm. Or is it just you being protected from certain yeah, things. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, okay, okay, if you're very intentional about seeking after God, even when you're struggling with doing things that you know, because most of the times we ask these questions and we deep down know that yeah. these are things that are not in alignment with what God wants for me. Deep down to Najuanga, it's only that we want to be comfortable in those things and not want to sacrifice mm-hmm. uh, for the sake of our work with God. And um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, get, get, get your thoughts together. Yeah, um, I'll go, I'll go back to brokenness. You know, like um, sur- fully surrendering to God, and um, w- when you're intentional, oh, when you're intentional with seeking after God, that's when you're so many things really depend on your relationship with God, because as you progress in your work with God. The Holy Spirit will start convicting you to stop doing certain things that you were yeah. that you are doing. Yeah, even other things that you thought were right at Okuomiokoka, the Holy Spirit will start convicting you. It will it will it will gradually be there, and yeah. eventually you'll stop doing that. Yeah, yeah. Like you're saying, I think it's just you know some things you really really enjoyed, mm-hmm. and then you'll do that thing, and you'll just feel like a thing in your spirit telling you, I'm, exactly, mm, yeah. And you start, yeah, like, yeah, I've been like, doing this I, for do so I long. really want to do this anymore, yeah, and that's yeah. maybe something that you know really you really enjoyed, and because because you're now allowing God, you're inside. allowing God, yeah, yeah you're allowing so God, God to you. anatoa, yeah. Yeah, all those. So it's not as hard as 
people on like people think it is mm-hmm. once you allow the holy spirit mm-hmm. to lead you and like we're saying you're not going to do it out of your own strength mm-hmm. you're not going to you know it's god who's going to help you and one one this i'm going to share this as a secret best ah, ah, bado sijakuuliza hiyo oh eh. so niandike watu basi niandike this <laughs> i want to ask you one last question uh-huh. before you share your uh-huh. best kept secret mm-hmm. because you're a you're a gospel artist mm-hmm. right I am. Which I feel like you need to give us some more songs. I got you. I got you. What's up? I mean, we love Mama Michael, mm-hmm. but I'm currently it? working on an album. It's called okay. Sounds of the Last Days. Oh, great! Yeah, yeah. Tunangoja, yeah. legally. So, in relation to music, mm-hmm. because I know that's also some a thing people struggle with. Mm-hmm. Entertainment. We live in a very, you know, world that ha- is full of entertainment, mm-hmm. music, books, mo- movies, and all of these things. So, in terms of music, like. Do you what are your thoughts about secular music cuz it's Apo pia pako na conviction pia. Iko na conviction. Um also at a, in my work with God uh, I also used to struggle listening to secular music. Um, First of all do you think it's bad to listen to secular music? Um <laughs> I sit a sugar coat yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please share. Because uh, I'll go back to the Bible. Mm-hmm. The Bible says, out of the abundance, ni abundance, ama? abundance. abundance of mm-hmm. the heart, yeah. the mouth speaks. Yes. And uh, there's, there's correlation uh, of that verse and garbage in, garbage out. Mm-hmm. And there's also power in what you listen to. Yeah. Yeah. So when when all you listen to is songs about sex that's also going to translate in your life. Yeah. Because that's what you're consuming. That's what you're feeding yourself. Yeah, that's what you're feeding yeah. yourself, yeah. And light and darkness cannot they cannot yeah. live together. Yeah. So one has to one has to go away, one has to one has to stay. So yeah. <laughs> I think that's all okay. I can say. Yeah. I feel like I've, I struggle with that mm-hmm. if I'm being completely honest mm-hmm. because for me when I was in high school mm-hmm. we used to get those pastors who used to come in tell us about Illuminati mm-hmm. and how all of these artists are in Illuminati and they'd play us this like movies or whatever documentaries about the Illuminati and Lil Wayne and Sijuhu and the signs that they make and all of these things so it was presented to me with a lot of fear yeah, yeah, yeah. right like they yeah. put fear within me that if i listen to secular music mm-hmm. i'm going to hell mm-hmm. i'm doing all of these things so i you know like i was saying there's a lot of unlearning you need to do and yeah. relearning for yourself yeah. so i struggled with that only until recently where i i i think i watched a someone or someone who was saying how you have to test the spirit behind it is mm-hmm. actually in the bible mm-hmm. it says mm-hmm. test the spirit mm-hmm. so I started listening keenly to some words or lyrics that are in certain songs that I exactly. like and, and like, I'd be yeah. like mm, yeah, no. yeah. I don't know about that mm-hmm. you know what I mean I do I really want to sing exactly. that yeah. because you know the power of life and death is in our tongues so mm-hmm. do I want to profess those things when I Over sing yourself, it yeah. so there are certain artists that I don't listen to mm-hmm. I won't play them in my house artists that I really 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 mm-hmm. used to love and now I'm just like mm, I don't really want to say out loud certain things and profess them in my life too I don't know the spirit behind them mm-hmm. I will give examples and I'm being really like um okay not I'm being I don't want to not I don't want to I feel like people might may come for me mm-hmm. and it's okay mm-hmm. if they come for me this is my opinion I don't listen to Beyonce I don't know the spirit behind mm-hmm. her music mm-hmm. Um an artist I really really love is Drake. Like I would pay how, however amount of money to go to a Drake concert. Mm-hmm. But recently like cl- late last year I listened to a song and he was saying something something him being demonic. I was just like And that's no, why that's why no, I'm saying I'm you, not gonna say that out loud. You know you what see, I mean? You see, you see yeah. th- these minute things, these minute things. It all depends. You know I can't I can't impose on everyone this yeah. I think. Don't listen to secular music. Don't listen yeah. to secular music. It all depends with your relationship with God. Yeah. Because eventually, if the Holy Spirit wants to, He Himself will convict you to stop listening yeah. to secular music. Exactly. Yeah. So for me, 
I'm still struggling to let go of Drake. To yeah. be honest, I've not fully let mm-hmm. go of him. Mm-hmm. In fact, today I saw an Instagram post of his and he was saying something, something satanic. In his actual Instagram what caption... What other sign do you need, Sharon? I was just like, Lord, I what know. Like, I, I'm, saying it, I'm saying it, but I love the man. So I get it and I get that uh-huh. struggle to be like, I really love this mm-hmm. person's music, mm-hmm. but the words that they are saying... If am I comfortable saying those words out loud? Mm-hmm. So I don't think that all secular music is bad. Like I love a good love song, you know. On my wedding day, I want to be able to play love songs yeah. and not feel some type of way yeah. about it. Yeah. It's just, you know, one, what are the lyrics saying? Mm-hmm. Two, what is the spirit behind it? Mm-hmm. If you're unsure about those two things, mm-hmm. I don't know about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, I, yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, those are those you. are my thoughts. So now you can tell us what your best kept secret for this conversation would be. Um, for for you to be very solid, solid in your work with God, you need prayer and you need the Word of God. And one mm-hmm. thing that I've struggled with for the longest time, longest time, niku kachini kusoma Biblia, si pale kwa church, not even in a Bible study setting. Yeah, peke yako. Peke yangu. You know, like setting time aside to read the word of God and to actually pl- uh, pray and tell the Holy Spirit, please reveal unto me uh, what this verse says. Just speak to me. I delight in hearing your voice. I, I, I really struggle with that. Yeah. But then when you are a Christian, umeokoka, and the only thing you're surviving on is prayer, it won't work. Yeah. You will constantly find yourself going back to the old ways, going back to the old sins. You'll constantly do the same things over and over and over. But trust me, when you start reading the word for yourself, on yourself, on your own, you will notice so much difference. So much difference. Kuna umseni on Instagram, he was asking, so you're expecting God to speak to you when your Bible is closed? Ooh. Yeah, you're expecting, God to, you're expecting to hear the voice of God when your Bible is closed. Because yeah. how else will God speak to you? God aliandika, his words... They are there with us. And that's the only way God is going to speak to you. So if your Bible is closed. Yeah. 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 So reading the word of God on top of prayer, because I know most of us don't struggle with prayer, especially ukiwana kashida mali unatembea. Most of us don't struggle with prayer. Sayundu naomba. Yeah, sayundu. Exactly. Kuna pasta alikuwa nasema unatumia mungu kama fire extinguisher. Only when you have a problem. And I mean, we all fall. Yeah. Tunafanyanga hivyo most of the time. But reading the word of God, it's really the game changer in your work with God. It really changes everything. Because yeah. now, after ukianza kujisomea biblia wewe mwenyewe, you'll even start hearing someone in church and you'll start questioning them and asking yourself, is that biblical? Yeah. Is that biblical? Mm. And it will, it will really open your eyes and it will give you insights on what to do in every single setting in your mm-hmm. own house, in your business, in your career, while you're driving, in every single thing, the Bible has an answer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I agree with everything you've said. Um, I don't really want to add on anything. Mm-hmm. I think we've covered mostly everything. You know, I wish I was one of those people who are very articulate, but me, I'm getting there. Many of them are very juicy. And I yeah. wish, you know, this is a topic, mm-hmm. when it comes to talking about Christianity, yeah. especially among the young people, I'm usually, I'm usually so passionate about it. And I'm just praying that God will, will really touch my tongue, really touch, I don't know if it's Jeremiah, and I will be very articulate and have so much knowledge, um, so much knowledge, yeah. I will be able to speak and people will be convicted to really draw closer and closer yeah. to God. Yeah. Well, our hope and prayer is that at least one person was convicted or yeah, inspired yeah, by this yeah, video. Yeah. Um, I empathize with everyone who, anyone who is in that space where they're just like me, I don't know if I really can do this Christian mm-hmm. thing yeah. or they're struggling because they don't have, they don't want to let, let certain things go. Mm-hmm. They don't know where to start. They don't have community. Mm-hmm. I empathize because I was there mm-hmm. um, not so many years ago. Um, I think what I can just leave everyone with is there's a verse in the Bible that says, um, if you seek him, you'll find him. And when you draw, that's another, I'm mixing two Bible verses together. Mm-hmm. But when you draw closer to God, he draws closer unto yeah. you as well. So it's Jeremiah. just 
it's just you taking the first step and God will meet you. Yeah. And yeah. he will bring those friends. He will help you. He will do all of those things. He'll give you a community. He'll give you community. Mm-hmm. He'll give you the strength to be able to do whatever it is you're feeling like you can't let go of. Um, and Christianity is not boring. We do not live in bondage. We live with boundaries and those boundaries are good for us. They yeah. are not supposed to take away joy from us or fun from us. Um, it's also important for us to unlearn and relearn a lot of things we have been taught growing up mm-hmm. that are yeah. religious and we have believed. So, yeah, I think that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you for listening to us on our audio platforms. Thank you, Mike, for coming and for sharing. <laughs> I know you've been saying that you feel like you're not articulate enough, but I feel like whatever it is you've shared yeah. is... I feel like I have one more secret. Okay, (laughs) share. I have one more secret. Uh, One of the things that really helps me is using God. um, Using God sounds wrong, but using God as as my journal. I used to journal a lot. But then when I started having conversations now with God, assuming that he's there, not assuming, I knew, okay, I had to convince myself that he's there. Yeah. You know, if I felt frustrated, if I felt lonely, I could just sit and talk and talk to God Mm. and directly address God. One of the misconceptions that most people have about Christianity is that, you know, prayers are very, you know, God Almighty, King of Kings. You know, people, yeah. it's, it's because people pray like that. Mm. But most of the times it's usually, it's not a monologue. Yeah, it's a conversation. It's yeah. a dialogue. And you're supposed to speak to God and be raw, like completely raw with God, especially yeah. about your emotions. Yeah. God, I feel so frustrated. I was yeah. heartbroken. And the I've things been... you're struggling with. Exactly. Yeah. I'm struggling with this and this. Please help me, God. Yeah. Articulate it and in any language that you can, God will hear you. Yeah. Yeah. The way you just journal, speak yeah. to God. Have a conversation yeah. with God. I yeah. completely agree. It's just what I was saying. I, we were saying earlier about unlearning certain yeah. things. Yeah. We were taught that God is this big guy in heaven that's yeah. scary and yeah. you're supposed to approach him in a certain way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just your dad. The same way you go and you talk to your dad is mm-hmm. the same way you go and talk to God and tell him, I'm struggling with this, this and this. I feel this and this. Help me here, here and here. Yeah. And I, yeah, that's, it's just a conversation. Yeah. 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 That makes two secrets. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you guys for watching or for listening to us. We'll see you in our next episode. Um, or you'll hear us in our next episode. Thank you.